set of scriptures. So I'm going to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read through them all. Title of this, Gentiles beware. This is going to be my parting message. Mm -hmm. Gentiles beware. Mm -hmm. You're being seduced with a false gospel. Oh, yes. And there's going to come a day when the tri our trial comes on the whole earth and you're going to wish you had made a different choice. Mm -hmm. You pay the piper now or you pay him later. You don't want to wait till later. Mm -hmm. This takes time walking in this thing. Mm -hmm. However, I really believe that people that are coming in now, Yahweh is accelerating their understanding and growth. Yes. Because the time is short. Yeah. You don't have a lot of time. Yeah. This beast is... It, and I'm going to touch on this in a few minutes. This beast is coming. Mm -hmm. He's alive. Mm -hmm. And he's waiting in the shadows to appear. Mm -hmm. And he's just waiting till the fullness of the Gentiles is complete. Mm -hmm. And the ones that are left that reject this message, they're going to take that mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. But let's go ahead and read in Romans 11 through 11 through 25. And it's funny because I get Christians that like to argue with me about these different things. And I say, do you not even take Paul's admonition to be very careful as a Gentile to not speak against the natural olive tree. And they won't even answer that because mm -mm. they know what he says. But mm -hmm. well, let's read it. I say then, have they of Israel stumble to trip and fall short of salvation that they should fall? Certainly not. Yahweh forbid. Mm -hmm. But through their fall, whether unintentional or willful transgression to provoke them to jealousy, to stimulate to rivalry. Salvation has come to the Gentiles. Yes, sure. It's out there. Mm -hmm. It's here for you if you want it. Mm -hmm. If you dare to take the challenge. Yeshua is salvation. He is salvation. He has came to the Gentiles. Right. Ain't salvation. Yah, I am, mm -hmm. Shua, mm -hmm. salvation. salvation. Mm -hmm. That's why we don't say Jesus, because mm -hmm. it don't mean nothing. Mm -mm. He who calls on my name, Yahshua, mm -hmm. will be saved. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. It's not complicated. If your original name is Joe or Mary or whatever it is, and you go out there and everybody starts saying, I'm going to change your name to something else, and you don't recognize it, you know, who does that? Mm -hmm. You know, his name is Yahshua. The name Jesus didn't exist in his day. Mm -mm. And yet I'm told today, everybody's going to call the name of Jesus. They, if you were to say the name Jesus back in Yahshua's day, they say, who is that? <laughs> <laughs> who is that? It, the English language hadn't even been formulated yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, they, they could have maybe said uh, Isus, maybe, or something mm -hmm. like that, but they wouldn't have said Jesus. Anyway, that, that's getting off track. Now, if they're, let's see, where was I? Was I in here? Yeah. Yes. Now, if their fall, whether unintentional or willful transgression is riches, a valuable bestowment for the world and their failure that is deteriorating riches for the Gentiles, how much to a greater degree more their fullness that makes it complete. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cause now you're joining the two trees in essence. Mm -hmm. oh, this thing is tricky for I speak and break my silence. Mm -hmm. I will not be silent anymore. Mm -hmm. Listen to me, you Gentiles, mm -hmm. inasmuch as mm -hmm. I am an apostle, mm -hmm. as an ambassador of the gospel with miraculous powers to the Gentiles, I magnify and render it glorious my ministry. Mm -hmm. This is what he's saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There ain't no bones about it. Mm -hmm. You're rising me up to anger now. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not going to stay silent no more because mm -hmm. I'm watching some language going on out there I don't like. Yes. And we're going to set this record straight right now. Mm -hmm. If by any means I may provoke to stimulate, to rivalry, to jealousy, those who are my flesh, the Jews, mm -hmm. and save some of them. Mm -hmm. For if their Israel being cast away as rejection is the reconciling, which is restoration by divine favor through atonement of the world of the Gentiles, what will their Israel's acceptance of admission be but life from the dead? Mm -hmm. Because today we got a lot of Christians say we replace Israel. Yeah. The Jews are history. Well, they don't even understand who the Jews are. They don't understand who history is. A lot of them anyway. But, and I'll say this, all Jews are Israelites, but not all Israelites are Jews. 
Mm -hmm. You can't call Israel, all of Israel Jews, all mm -hmm. 12 tribes. Mm -hmm. The 11 brothers would have had to descend from Judah. Mm -hmm. And they're not. They're all brothers. Mm -hmm. And Judah wasn't the firstborn anyway. Mm -hmm. He was the fourth, I think the fourth born. So how could he be the father of all the Jews, all the other tribes? Mm -hmm. Come on, stop and go read your Bible. Now I think in, in 2 Kings 16, 6, it says, and Israel was at war with the Jews. Well, how could Israel be at war with the Jews if Israel are the Jews? Mm. It's a misnomer. Okay, verse 15. For if their Israel being cast away as rejecting... Is, okay, I think I read this, didn't I? Yeah, I already read that, sorry. For if the first fruit of the spring sacrifice is holy, ceremonially sacred, and religiously blameless, the lump as a mass of dough is also holy, ceremonially sacred, and religiously blameless. And if the root is holy, so are the branches that were broken off. And if some of the branches were broken off, and you Gentiles, being a wild and raging olive tree, were grafted in among to be in the state of rest with them, and with them become a partaker as co-participants of the root and fatness, rich oiliness of the olive tree. Do not boast against as in exalting yourself and rejoice against the branches of Israel. And this is exactly what I experience out there. Mm -hmm. The Christian's going to tell me exactly how it is. Mm -hmm. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I have to laugh at the arrogance mm -hmm. of these people. They have no idea what they're even arguing. It's mm -hmm. a false gospel. Mm -hmm. But if you do boast, as in glorying in yourself in exaltation, that's exactly what I see with Christians. Mm -hmm. Rem not all of them, but a, but a, a fair amount. Uh -huh. Remember that, and I know why they're doing it. They're doing it because their faith is being challenged. Mm -hmm. And they know they don't have the legal argument. And it makes them mad that somebody is putting this in front of them. But Paul said, I do this to provoke them to jealousy. Yeah, and, I, and, I, and, and me as your leader, I can't let you know that I didn't know something. Well, that's not humility. No. If I learned something and I'm in error, then I need to go back and tell, hey, I was wrong about this. Right. We need to repent and let's, let's change this thing. Right. But the leaders refuse to repent. Right. And, and to the credit of some Christian pastors, mm -hmm. I'm seeing some movement where they're starting to go to the Sabbath and to the commandments mm -hmm. and they're giving up the name of Jesus and God and Lord and all these other paganistic names that are used out there. And, you know, if you're in ignorance, you know, and I was for many years, mm -hmm. um, that's fine because it's about a growth. It's about becoming aware and coming into a deeper understanding and a deeper relationship with the Messiah. And then he begins to real, reveal to you, you know, I really don't like when you call me this name. Call me by what I was actually called by. Because mm -hmm. that Hebrew name has a meaning. Mm -hmm. It has blessings attached to it. Mm -hmm. That one over there was taught by man. Mm -hmm. It's under heaven. Mm -hmm. It's not above heaven. Mm -hmm. There's only one name that's above heaven. Mm -hmm. But if you do boast as in glorying in yourself, in exaltation, remember that you do not support, have the ability to remove the root, but the root, which is Israel, is supports and has the ability to remove you Gentiles who are out of order. Mm -hmm. Lawbreaker. Mm -hmm. Won't receive the food. Won't the receive nourishment. the nourishment. Mm -hmm. And I meet a lot of them. Mm -hmm. You say, you will say then branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well, and honestly said, because of unbelief, through lack of faith, they were broken off. Mm -hmm. And you stand by faith. Mm -hmm. Do not be haughty to be in a state of mind and concern with your own opinion. Because mm -hmm. a lot of them have their own opinions. Mm -hmm. But they can't back it up by scripture. But fear to be in awe of reverence. Mm -hmm. So when somebody comes and they bail you out of a bad, bad situation in your life that you didn't possess the ability or the resources to get out of, and somebody comes and pays that debt if you don't have awe and reverence for the act of what that person did you're in a lot of trouble mm -hmm. a lot of trouble and that's what i see out there people take for granted they think they know everything already and they don't mm -hmm. verse 21 for if elohim did not spare the natural lineal descended branches of Israel, mm -hmm. 
he may not spare, treat leniently you Gentiles either. There's some hard language in the New Testament. You won't hear this in a Sunday church. Mm -mm. No way. They avoid this stuff like the plague. And you're being cheated if your pastor's not teaching this stuff. Therefore, consider the goodness and moral excellence and severity, deci deci decisiveness of Elohim on those who fell, severity of moral excellence. But toward you Gentiles, goodness, mm -hmm. useful moral demeanor, if you continue in his goodness, you also will be cut off. Mm -hmm. Cut you Gentiles down to the point of frustration. Mm -hmm. And they of Israel also, if they, Israel, do not continue in unbelief through lack of faith, in other words, they repent, mm -hmm. will be grafted in again, for Elohim is able to graft them in again. For if you Gentiles were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild and enraging and unrestrained by nature, and that's what I see out there, there is no moral restraint on it. Boy, they use all kinds of lies and deceptions that I see that they use against me and stuff. I mean, they just twist my words and stuff. There's no conscience that you're not sticking to what I actually said, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. If you Gentiles were cut off by uh, the olive tree, which is wild and raging and unrestrained by nature and were grafted contrary to nature of lineal descent, because you're not of Israel, so he's looking down on you saying, I'll bring you in into a cultivated olive tree of Israel that is domesticated and improved. This is what my wife did to me after 40 years. <laughs> she domesticated me and improved me. Uh -huh. So I, I understand what this process is all about. Mm -hmm. I've had 40 years of it. Mm -hmm. How much more will these of Israel, who are the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree of Israel? Mm -hmm. Verse 25, for I do not desire, brethren, that you Gentiles should be ignorant through disinformation, and there's a lot of that, lack of intelligence, there's a lot of that, and through willful disinclination, which there's a lot of that, mm -hmm. of this mystery, it's a mystery, as silenced and sealed by initiation into a religious rite. In other words, the only people that really understand this is the ones that have been initiated into this faith. Mm-hmm. And you've walked it for a while, and then he reveals these secrets of this mystery of this gospel. Not mm -hmm. the one you hear out there in the world, mm -hmm. in the churches, mm -hmm. but this one. And they out there can't understand this mystery because they have not yet been initiated into it. Mm -hmm. They cannot be entrusted with inside information about how this really works. You have to experience it yourself. Lest you should be wise with bad intelligence that lacks proper skill in your own opinion, that is callousness and stupid through hardness, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. Okay. So that ends all the scriptures I'm bringing up for Romans 11. You have any comments on that? No, we good. No comments. Yes, you. Are good. you, you lost did. your wind? No, you did it. Justice. The rulock is is taking a nap on you or something. I, I cannot add on to what you just did, brother. You did it justice. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Ain't no need of me messing it up. <laughs> so the summation of that is Gentiles beware. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you ain't gonna hear this just anywhere, and you ain't gonna hear a lot of this in the Hebraic roots either. Mm -mm. Because they, a lot of them, unfortunately, have watered this thing down because it's about the money. Yes, it is. We don't do this for money. I don't ask for money. You don't ask for money. It's about love. You know, man. my wife gives me the only money that I get, you know. <laughs> but other than that, <laughs> I don't get no money, mm -hmm. you know. But we do this on our own out of love and passion and the driving force of the Ruach HaKodesh that leads us to do this. Mm-hmm. And for those who it benefits, it benefits. And for those who it doesn't, it doesn't. Now, I'm going to go into a last phase here. It'll just take a couple of minutes. And I'm going to say, well, how do you summate, summate, make a summation of this whole thing? Mm -hmm. I always like to look into the future. It talks about, we talked about in the beginning, how the, until the law, in other words, at its finishing point. Mm -hmm. And you said it. If you can't see the end, how are you going to know what the beginning is? Mm -hmm. Or vice versa. Mm -hmm. If you don't start at the beginning, how are you going to know where the end is? Mm -hmm. 
my ministry has always been a prophetic ministry. And what I'm seeing that Yahweh has been showing me, and this whole book of Revelation that I transcribed, uh, re reinterpreted, uh, using the Greek, not Hebrew, but it's from a Hebraic perspective. Um, if you take the time and go through it, and you can download a free copy of it um, from the website, and you can watch the YouTubes uh, on there as well. Um, there's a lot of information in that translation that starts, you can start drawing where I'm going. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of videos out there about the beast, who the beast is, where it's going to be, and all that kind of stuff. And the genesis of that Revelation series that I did was because Yahweh gave me a title for it mm -hmm. before I even started. And it confused me. And it was the title that he gave me was Yahweh's indictment against his wife and her ultimate redemption. Mm -hmm. Now, in conceptual form, I understood what that meant. But I really didn't get the, the fullness of it till about seven or eight months into actually translating it. Mm -hmm. And then it became clear to me what he was really saying. And you want to talk about a rabbit hole that goes down deep, that one goes down real deep. So what am I saying? What I'm saying is, is that the beast is alive and he's somewhere. Mm -hmm. My guess he's over there in Europe somewhere. Mm -hmm. This world is being run by a cabal. It's being run by the elite. And I think a lot of people really believe that, and they should, because the evidence is overwhelming. Now, some people say it's this, some people say it's that, and, and fine, okay. But this virus that just went around the world, and we're starting to kind of come out of a little bit, I said from the beginning was a dry run. Mm -hmm. And the reason why it's a dry run is because I get the sense that this cabal, this elite, and I'm going to tell you in a minute who they are, that's running all the corporations, running the media, running the health organizations, all this. And I'm not, this is not my point to, to get political. I'm not a political person. I'm just simply kind of laying a basic, very basic conceptual foundation. Is waiting for their king to come on the scene. And Jerusalem is waiting for this Jewish King Messiah to come on the scene. Mm -hmm. Now, in order to make that happen, there's a whole bunch of choreographed things that have to take place in order for that to come about. And one of them is, is you have to be able to be able to start disseminating um, spirit of fear, where people start giving up their sovereignty, start giving up their rights. Make them fear something that supposedly is a threat, but really is not a threat, but you've convinced them it's a threat. It's kind of like this gospel message. The whole world's received this false gospel message, but the one that we're trying to bring is the one that they don't want. Mm -hmm. But everybody's buying a hook, line, and sinker because they want to believe the lie. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. They want to believe the lie. So this cabal is a satanic group. And this cabal... In regards to this virus, and, and here's the thing about the cabal. As Satanists, they have a legal responsibility in their religious system to inform the prey of who they're, who they're going to victimize, what they're going to do to them before they do it. Now, I talked before about being initiated into religious rites. As a matter of fact, it's right up on the screen right here. If you are given the signs of what this cabal is propagating out there mm -hmm. and you don't know how to interpret what that means, then you will fall prey to it. All the more reason why you need the Messiah in your life to help you to learn how to cut through all the barrage of media that you're being bombarded with from different sources and be able to get down to the nitty gritty of what's really going on. And what Yahweh has shown me is there's this satanic group that's a, a cabal that's in charge of everything. Mm -hmm. And they're of Jewish lineage. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna put it up right now so 